Hi everybody, uh, not very happy today about the Arturia key step. This is a small keyboard that I have been using for the last uh, few years. I bought it new, I think five or six years ago. It has always worked very good. It's a very handy controller because it has 32 keyboards and has MIDI in and out. It has also has um, CV and gate controls, clock in, clock out, so it's perfect for usage with a modular. But after a couple of years, many keys just failed, and I have already fixed them, I think, two or three years ago. Then I have not been using that very much. Today I took it out of the closet and none of the keys are working. You can see it. I have it connected both to the screen here, um, to a Roland JV, for example, and I have also MIDI monitor here, so you can see that it receives channel pressure. If I click the keys, or many of the keys, some channel pressure is sent, but no MIDI on and off is sent. No, none of the keys actually works, I'll, except this one. Yeah, this one, sometimes it works. You can see there's some sound coming out of it, but nothing else. And I also have connected down here, I have Innovation Supernova connected through MIDI, and the same happens using the VST or using the, the, the physical synth. But if I press play for sequence, it's, it's working perfectly. So of course the sequencer is sending out MIDI notes, so the unit is working, but none of the keys is working. So before trash that out, because uh, actually I'm getting a little bit bored about this keyboard. I think it's, it's been poorly engineered, I think at least the contacts, the key contacts has not been really carefully tested and they are really sensitive to dirt, to debris, maybe humidity and I had never been using this for the last, I think, couple of years, but I was not expect, expecting nothing to be working. Only this one, you, you see, sometime if I press very hard, I get some notes out of it, otherwise it is completely silent. So let's try to fix it. So let's take it apart and try different methods. The first method will be to just clean the contacts with the alcohol or the isopropyl alcohol. And the next method will be to use a specific product for this kind of contact. So stay tuned and see what happens in the next few minutes. Yeah, and in order to disassemble it, we need to remove the plastic knobs first for the controls here. So let's put them aside and then we need to reverse it and to unscrew all unscrew all the small screws that are that are holding the metal plate on the back. So let's start by removing them. So basically you need to remove all the, the bigger screws so there are here in the front row and in the back row, a couple on the sides and one, two, the middle and three. So now the unit should be free and you should be able to move the plastic part and you can see, so let me go back on the other side, there's a small connector going from the actual keyboard through here. So we need to take this out. It's a very simple Molex connector. So you need to remove the keyboard. And then we also have a flat cable here. So we need to carefully remove this one as well. Okay, so now the plastic part is free. So this circuit board should have nothing to worry about so we now need to concentrate on the key bed itself and there are additional screws here to remove it
And so after removing the smaller eight screws, the key band should be able to attach from the metal. Yeah, there's a piece of tape holding it here. So basically the problem should be under here. So we have all the contacts here. And so we need to remove now all the keys and to clean the contents and to inspect the contents. So let me put the metal plate aside. Let's bring the okay, let's remove uh, the key bed and uh, the key bed PCB. There are just a few screws. That's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so after removing these small screws, we should be able to take the PCB out, maybe applying a little bit of force. Actually, we need to, yeah, move this one. One, two, three, and four. Yeah, after the small four tabs here, uh, being removed, we have now have the contacts. So the contacts have a rubber part, which probably have some kind of magnet, so to speak. So one should be for pressure, and the other one should be for the actual key that's pressed. So let's remove this and remove all the contacts here. So we need to now try to clean them, clean everything and see with some alcohol. I only have some alcohol here, not some isopropyl. We will try both. So let's remove all these contacts and we can try to clean them all. They really don't seem very dirty, but they are probably not conducting very well. And the first method I'm going to try is just to use uh, normal alcohol is called uh, I think it's called Robin alcohol in English in Italy is usually pink I think in USA in the US and the UK it's usually white but it's the same kind of alcohol so let's try to put some alcohol on, a, on an old cloth and then give a good clean to the contact so the contact strip and the rubber itself so the contact strip seems to be quite clean so i think we have no problem here no issues here so let's clean it with some alcohol so let's rub it a little bit a little bit more maybe yeah okay it does seem very clean then let's try only the last the last octave possibly so let's try to clean the small contacts here one by one by rubbing them with some alcohol i think this is why it's called rubbing alcohol because you need to rub the contacts very well so first pass let's try to clean it and try to add a little more alcohol on them and then give them a second a second pass. Yeah, I only want to do the last doctor just in order to test how rubbing alcohol works. So I will now put put it back together. We maybe wait a little bit in order to dry it and then to reinstall the contacts here on the last octave and see if now if it now works. And if you want to do a better job, so to clean them better, you can also use a Q-tip with the same alcohol. So uh, you can be more precise, so you can have a little bit of alcohol on the tip of the Q-tip and then clean very carefully and very gently the contacts. And this should be a little bit better and should provide a little more cleanliness to the contacts themselves. Yes, I was looking at it at reverse, so it's going to be the first octave, actually, not the last one. So let's try to insert the key contest strip again. 
press it in place and maybe let's just put a couple screws back so it makes good contact and press it tightly okay now so now the first con the first octave is in and i have a couple of screws and let's put the connectors back so let's have this flex cable before it's a little bit torn so probably we also have a problem here it's not broken but it's a little bit torn okay so let me put it the right way okay like this and let's also put this small Molex collect connection in. Okay, we are ready to test it. And after cleaning the key contacts with a Q tip and uh, some rubbing alcohol, now the unit seems to work again. Again, I, I have only fixed for the moment this for these four keys, uh, seven keys actually, and the first octave. So this C key doesn't work yet because I have not connected. I still haven't reconnected the keyboard, only just the contacts. But everything seems to be back to normal. Actually, I will not trust this method really much because I have already done it in the past and maybe it will last one year, maybe two, and then after a couple of years or maybe maybe less, you will have the same issues. But as you can see now, it's working very, it's working very good. No issues. The keys are playing pretty well, so it was just a matter of dirt, humidity, debris, stuff like that. So let's now to fix another octave using isopropyl alcohol and see how it behaves. And the second method we are going to test is to use isopropyl alcohol or IPA, which is a better cleaner and it evaporates quickly, it leaves less residues and so on. So again, with a Q-tip we are going to clean all the contacts. And then again, after cleaning the contacts, we are going to put them back together in place and to reconnect the PCB strip and the PCB contact and to connect the ribbon cable and the Molex cable again and see if it now works. And so again, after cleaning the second octave with Isopropyl alcohol, everything is back to normal again. Okay, the third octave is still not connected, but the second one is working very good. Again, I don't know if you would rec recommend isopropyl alcohol. Again, it's a better cleaner than, of course, the rubbing alcohol, but I think it will work only for short term repairs and not for long term. Because again, it's just alcohol, and so I'm afraid that just that just like rubbing alcohol, it will last maybe a couple of years, and then you will have the same problem. So let's try. Let's now try the last method, which will be to add a special paste called K coat, which will probably restore all the key contacts, and they will last probably forever. And the last method I'm going to show you is to use this product, which is called k Code 44. This is a very small bottle, it's quite expensive because I think it contains some silver paste and conductive paste. This is a very old bottle that I bought, I think, 15 or 20 years ago, but it still be working, even if they say it has a shelf life of just one year after opening. So basically, in the, in the box you have this small Q-tip-like uh, brush, so basically you simply need to apply a very very small amount of this kind of paste as it was a paint so basically you're going to paint all the small contacts 
supplying a very very tiny little tiny amount it costs us so, so much so you better be wise just a tiny amount will, will do and then you need to let it dry and cure they say for about 15 minutes and for complete uh, cure maybe a few hours so maybe I will leave it overnight and maybe tomorrow morning I will test it also I'm going to do all the keyboard now so I have cleaned them all with rubbing alcohol or isopropyl alcohol and then I will let it dry And this is now the last octave after I applied the, the silver paste, the K-coat. And as you can see, everything is back to normal. So all the keyboard, all the keys now work. And this solution should probably last a little bit longer, maybe forever, because I have already tried this solution on other scenes and it, they are still working today. So hopefully this will fix the issue forever for this Arturia key step.